Just yesterday, we celebrated the great feast of the Basilica of St. Michael the Archangel. This is also a feast of all of the angels of heaven. This is a double of the first class feast, the highest ranking feast, um, the highest rank that the church has to give to a feast. And then in just a couple of days, we will also celebrate the feast of the holy guardian angels. And in a few more weeks, we get the feast of another angel of St. Raphael on October 24th. It's really interesting that the church groups all of these uh, feasts of angels together so closely in the calendar because most feast days of the saints occur on, on the day of the saint's death. But obviously with, with angels, the church can put the, the feast of an angel whenever she wants because <clears throat> angels don't die. So it's interesting that we have so many of them a bunch together here in September and October. It's like the church wants us to think seriously about the holy angels at this time of year. And she gives us several feasts in a row to make sure that we don't miss the point. Now, we know that angels exist from scripture and tradition and also from reason. We see angels everywhere in scripture on almost every page, really. We can understand a little bit about what an angel is by abstracting from our own nature. We know that we have a spiritual soul. We have a mind that can understand ideas, even completely abstract ideas. And we also have a will. We want things. These are the spiritual components of our nature. This is our soul. And everything else about us is physical. So if we imagine ourselves with only our intellect and our will, without our body or any of our five senses, we can kind of approach a dim understanding of what an angel is. However, an angel is far more intelligent and powerful than we can even imagine. Imagine the most intelligent person who ever lived that person's intelligence is nothing in comparison with the intellect of even the lowest angel. The angels know practically everything there is to know about the natural world. They know all about all of the, the laws of nature. They have a vast understanding of human nature also, of not only the human body, but also the human mind. Far more extensive than any, any scientist or, or doctor or or a learned person. The angels also have very strong wills, stronger than we can understand. Once an angel decides he wants something, his will is almost irresistible. They don't do anything by half measures, and they're not lazy. They devote their whole being to getting what they want, whether for good or for bad. And they never change their mind either. The reason we change our minds is because sometimes we learn more about the what we decided to do or we see it in a different light or, or we get tired of, of an idea or something like that. Usually our emotions change about some something that we decided to do or something we, we, we decided that we wanted. But none of these things apply with an angel because they know so much that they know everything there is to know about what they decide they want. So they can't learn more about, about something they decide. And as I said, the angels never get tired of something. They never get, they never get lazy or, or disinterested. And they don't have any emotions either because they are spirits and emotions are something physical. So they can't make decisions in the heat of passion. This is why God is willing to forgive us when we sin, when he doesn't forgive the devils. It's because the devils can't repent. They can't change their mind about the sin they committed because they knew what they were doing when they decided to reject God and they made that choice and their wills are fixed forever. 
even if God allowed angels the possibility to repent and be forgiven, none of them would repent because they don't want to. An angel's will is strong for good or for bad. The angels are divided into nine choirs, like nine ranks of angels. And from, from the top down, the, angel, the ranks of the angels are the seraphim, cherubim, thrones, thrones, sorry, dominations, virtues, powers, principalities, archangels, and angels. And these names all come from sacred scripture. That's how we know about this mostly from St. Paul, although there are, some of these ranks are mentioned also in the Old Testament. And it should be noted that the three angels whose names we know about that are mentioned in Scripture, St. Michael, St. Raphael, and St. Gabriel, are called archangels, but most theologians believe they don't belong to the, the rank of archangel. They are most likely seraphim, the highest order of angels. But they are called archangels because archangel means like a leader angel. And the these three saints are certainly leaders of the angels. We don't know how many angels there are. But we do know that their number is absolutely enormous. There are probably many, many more angels than there are human beings. In the book of Daniel, Daniel had a vision of, of the angels before the throne of God, and he said, thousands of thousands ministered to God, and 10,000 times 100,000 stood before him. <clears throat> and the apocalypse says something very similar. St. John had a vision, and he says, I heard the voice of many angels, and the number of them was thousands of thousands. All of the angels were created by God in a state of innocence, and even in sanctifying grace, just like man was. But we know that some of them sinned, they refused to serve God, and they were sent into hell, and they became the devils. We don't know how many angels rebelled, but there is good evidence that it was about one-third of them. This is based on a passage in the Apocalypse where St. John says that he saw a great red dragon whose tail drew a third part of the stars out of heaven and cast them onto the earth. This is taken to represent the, the angels that, that fell. And angels fell out of all of the nine choirs of angels. Even the very highest and most gifted angel of all became a devil. This was Lucifer. His name means light bearer because he was so enlightened. But after he fell, now we call him Satan, which means an enemy or an accuser. The devils want to bring us with them to hell because they hate God and, and they would like to destroy God if they could or, or hurt him in whatever way they can. But obviously they can't hurt God directly. So they, what they do instead is they try to take away any glory that God's creatures would give to him. And the only way they can do that is by trying to get us to offend God. One of the most interesting doctrines of the angels, of course, and the most important for us, is the teaching about the guardian angels, whose feast we celebrate in just a couple of days. The church teaches that every human being, whether he is baptized or not, whether he is Catholic or not, is assigned an angel at the moment that he is born. And this angel's job is nothing else than to protect the person that he is assigned to to help and to help him get to heaven. We are all familiar with this doctrine and we are probably all used to it. But when you really think about it, it is really an amazing proof of God's love for us. 
If you think about a very important person in a large business, for example, or a a powerful politician, or even just a very rich man, very often people in that state of life have a personal assistant. They have someone whose, whose job it is all day long to get them whatever they need and, and just do whatever, whatever they, they, whatever that person tells them to do. And we consider people who have an assistant like that to be very rich and powerful and unfortunate. But God has given us something very similar. In fact, much better. Because all of us, even the poorest person in the whole world, has a powerful angel helping him, both physically and spiritually. (laughs) We all have an assistant who is extremely intelligent and who is extremely powerful. And unlike a human assistant, our guardian angel doesn't take the weekends off. He doesn't get the flu. He never even sleeps. And he certainly never makes any mistakes. And he works completely for free, or he he works for for the love of God. And our angel is completely tireless in in the care that he has for us. I said earlier that when an angel wants something, he devotes all of his energy, his entire being, to bringing about what he wants. Well, our guardian angel wants one thing. He wants us personally to get to heaven. And so the only thing that he does all day long, of course he he adores God all day long, but uh, in addition to that, his only other concern is to try to save our soul. And our guardian angel has a a great, great love for us as the person that, that God entrusted to him. Our guardian angel loves us more than our own father or mother ever could because he has a much more powerful nature than any human being and a much stronger will. And also, our guardian angel wants us to love him in return. Our guardian angel not only protects our soul by warding off the temptations of the devils, he gives us inspirations to do good, He protects us in the temptations that that we do experience. He he, uh, strengthens us against in our resolve for virtue. And he also protects us, even in this life, from saving us from temporal harm. Probably all of us have been in situations where we were sure that we were going to get hurt. We've been in cars where we lost control or the driver lost control, for example, and somehow we escaped without getting hurt. And when we look back at what happened, we play it again through our minds. We we can't understand how we avoided crashing. It seemed physically impossible for us not to crash. Well, in those cases, it was probably our guardian angel that saved us. Our our angel intervened and, and bent the laws of physics or or, or put our car straight back on the road again. The angels have the power to move physical objects. It it could well be that that happened. It really is a shame how little we appreciate our guardian angels, how little we thank them for their care over us. We should have a devotion to our guardian angel. We should talk to him and, and pray to him and ask for his help when we need it. And probably we would get a lot more help from our guardian angel if we made better use of him. Of course, we have our our patron saints. We have saints we are devoted to, our favorite saints that we pray to. And of course, we, we pray to Our Lady the most and with the greatest love. But very often we forget completely about our guardian angel, our, our angel who is, belongs completely to us. There's no one else that prays to our own guardian angel. And our guardian angel doesn't have to worry about anybody except us alone. That is a beautiful thought. So we should think about him often and we should feel his presence with us. Especially when we are alone or afraid or tempted or have some some problem or some pressing need. 
In those times especially, we should pray to our guardian angel with confidence in his power and in his love. We should make our guardian angel our companion in life. In fact, God gave him to us to be our companion in life. And he is closer to us and loves us more than any friend or family member ever could. And we should let him guide us. We should listen to his inspirations. Sometimes we will suddenly remember something that we were supposed to do, like like say our rosary, or avoid some sin. Our, our guardian angel might remind us that we have to forgive some injury that someone did to us. And we don't know how that thought came into our minds when it did. It seems completely random. And again, it was probably our guardian angel looking out for us. Our angel can communicate with us, and usually he does that by putting thoughts into our minds. And we should accept those counsels when he gives them to us. And we should certainly let him never be a witness to us committing sin. The angelic world is something we can't see, but it's all around us all the time. Good angels and bad angels are fighting over our souls. But the choice ultimately lies with us, which side we will listen to. We need all the help that we can get to make the right decision. And that's what we should be thinking about on these feast days that are coming up. Let us pray to all the holy angels in this month of October. And let us always have a devotion to our own guardian angel. And think about him often. And if we have a devotion to the angels, they will use their immense powers on our behalf. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.